So you've got yourself a fresh set of scan data and you're wanting to create a 3D model from it. Well, to start, this process is called segmentation and it can be utilized in a variety of applications from a surgeon using a 3D print of a patient's fractured skull as a point of reference during a surgery to an engineer reverse engineering a football helmet into a finite element model. I'd even argue that segmentation was the true beginning of my career path when I was a lab intern tasked with segmenting aortas of atherosclerotic mice. So I know firsthand how daunting this process can seem at first. So let's begin. Like I said, the first thing you will need is some scan data. This is usually a set of CT or MRI scans. Then you'll need some form of software that specializes in segmentation. Two of the most commonly used ones are Mimix and Amira. If you need something free though, ITK Snap is probably going to be your best bet. This is what I used when I was a college student in that lab. And it works just fine. Now, your goal is to take something from these scans and reconstruct them into a 3D shape. This process is done by coloring in the region of the scan that you want, then moving to the next, and then the next, and so on. The most foolproof way to visualize this process is to think of the set of scans as a loaf of bread, with each slice representing a single scan. Now this sounds weird, but as you color each scan, the surrounding part of the bread is removed, gradually revealing a 3D bread sculpture, and this makes sense whenever you visualize it in your mind, and sometimes it's hard to visualize these things. Also, most of the software that I mentioned have functions that can be automated and help you color each part so that you don't have to manually fill in each scan one at a time and ruin your wrists. Once you finish this process, you'll have this jagged 3D object that sort of represents the object that you want to create. But why is it all jagged? Well, that comes down to the scan resolution and the scan thickness. That's right, just like your TV, the clarity of your scan data is determined by the number of pixels on each scan. But wait a second, these scans also have a thickness, almost like slices of bread. So we are dealing with three-dimensional pixels, also known as voxels. The jagged edges mean that you lost some data somewhere in your scan resolution and slice thickness. So the higher the resolution and the smaller the scan thickness, the more accurate your 3D model will be. But there are limits to these factors. Most scanners that have the capability of scanning a full-grown human have a minimum pixel size of around 0.5 millimeters and a minimum scan thickness of around 0.6 millimeters. However, smaller machines like micro CT are able to reduce this down substantially, but they are smaller. So you need to make sure that you leverage a scanner that fits your needs. And no matter how much resolution or how thin your slice thickness, you will still have some sort of jagged edges. But thankfully, computer programs like the segmentation software I mentioned earlier can help fill in the gaps of data within the thickness and smooth out your finished 3D model. Then you can export your 3D model as an STL file, which you can read into a variety of programs that will fit your needs. These range from 3D printing, CAD development, or finite element meshing software. And that's it. You really are just coloring bread.